So while I have this project open, I'm going to go back to this Z sphere object. If I press the A hotkey, you can see that this is the Z spheres. So I'm going to switch to preview mode and choose make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to go into the subtool palette and rename this branch. And this is going to basically end up being our larger structure. If I zoom out real quick. We're essentially going to make this with all of these polyps coming off of, uh, of the sides. Divide this once actually and then delete lower levels of subdivision just to have a little bit more geometry to work with. And I'm going to go in here and just maybe fatten up the uh, bottom with the inflate brush. And I'm going to switch over to my coral brush. So I'll press the M key, make sure I have the polyp selected and then lower my draw size. So I've added a few polyps here. I'm going to clear the mask. Take a look at the polyframes here. So essentially we can use polygrouping to our advantage here. At the moment where we have all the polygroups that have been inherited um, from the previous versions of these models. So polygroups are indicated by these colored regions. And polygroups can be a powerful masking tool. One way in which they can sort of help us save time in the future is if we use uh, polygroups to apply a mask and then uh, color based on that. So we don't have to it'll save some of our time um, when we're actually texturing. So I'm going to actually create, reorganize the polygroups of this model so that the individual um, polyps here are contained within a single polygroup and uh, this base here is a different polygroup. That way I can kind of separate them out a little bit easier. So I'm going to hold the control and shift key and click on this white part and then I'll click again to hide it. And I will click on the green part and the orange part to hide these. So I'm left with just basically the polyps. And now I'm going to go into the polygroup menu and choose group visible. That creates a single polygroup for all of these parts of the model. I'm going to press control and shift and click on a blank part of the, man of the canvas. And this time I'm going to press Control and Shift and click on the polyps once and again to hide them. And I'll do Group Visible. And so this is what I'm left with. And now what I can do um, is I can go into the Brush Palette and under, let's stick this someplace where we can actually see it. So in the Brush Palette under Auto Masking, I'm going to turn up Mask by Polygroup. And that means that uh, now the sculpting brushes will only affect the first polygroup that they um, come in contact with. In other words, if I start painting on this purple polygroup, the other polygroups, the red one, or the polyps rather, are automatically masked. Likewise, if I start um, brushing across the red polygroup, the polyps, then the purple polygroup is automatically masked. So. It's based on which surface you touch first. But I'm using this as a way to kind of inflate the surface out so I can start overlapping with, uh, with the polyps. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So let's make sure we save the file. So now I'm going to use DynaMesh to kind of fuse the entire surface together into one mesh. Um, so I'm going to go into, let's hide the brush palette for a second, expand tool, and go down to under geometry, DynaMesh, and I'm going to set the resolution to I think 256 just to see how that looks. So currently we're at 230,000 points. If I DynaMesh the model at a resolution of 256, we now get a model that's uh, 600,000 polygons. So it's a lot, but it's not completely unreasonable. Um, so it's just going to be a fairly dense model. This would probably be good for close-up shots. Uh, but it does have a nice amount of detail. But now that it is um, DynaMesh together, I'm going to switch to the clay brush. Let's hide this so we have some more real estate. And let's also switch on the uh, basic material to material so it's a little bit easier to see how the sculpting is working. And I'm just going to go in here and kind of smooth out this faceted uh, parts that were projected from the original model and also fill in some of the gaps in between the polyps. I'm also holding the shift key to smooth 
the model while I while I sculpt. Now I've kind of smoothed it out. I'm going to redynamesh again. Uh, since Dynamesh mode is already activated, all I need to do is hold the control key and drag on the canvas and let go. So there we go. And that just is a way to kind of smooth things out, make sure everything's blended. So I spent a few minutes adding some details, just simply using brushes such as the standard brush uh, with uh, this alpha and set to drag rect and just kind of drawing over the surface to add kind of this just sort of striation detail, um, sort of the striation kind of detail that you see right here in the surface. And once I'm satisfied with the uh, detail, I'm going to rotate the model so I'm looking at it from the top view. Make sure I have the coral brush selected and then I will choose brush, create insert mesh, and I'll choose to append it. So now um, when I hover over the brush and press the M key, you can see I have a branch. I actually have two versions of a branch. This is a version I created earlier. Uh, but I have uh, the branch as well as the polyps, the tentacles, and the other corals I made earlier. So I'll go to the brush palette and choose save as, and I'll save it as coral brush. So I've loaded the default sphere project into ZBrush. I've set the color to white. I'm going to set the SDiv slider and the geometry palette down to level one and then press delete higher. So it only has one level of subdivision. And then I'm going to quickly kind of just shape this a little bit using the move brush. Something like that will work just fine. And I'm going to switch to my coral brush and then draw one of these branches onto my surface. I'll switch back to the move brush and just kind of make this intersect a little better. I'm going to switch over to the transpose tool in move mode hold the control key and click drag the middle circle of transpose to make a quick copy. So this time lapse shows how I duplicated uh, the other uh, branches. And I use the clay, the smooth, and the hard polish brush to kind of bridge the gap between the original polysphere and these uh, uh, and the branches. Um, now there's a huge difference in the polygon density of the polysphere and those of the branches, of course, and you can kind of see that it creates some seam issues down there. In my plan for this rendering, I'm not really thinking that we're going to see the base too much, so I'm not too worried about it. So. Rather than make an overly dense mesh down there, I just chose to go with kind of a low polygon object and just kind of smoothing out the uh, gaps in between. So in paint,